right. <laughs> Jeremy, we missed you. We missed you a lot. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> All right, so today we are continuing our series on love. And the definition of love was what? Choosing to choose the lady. Choosing to choose Okay, let's read it off of the screen, but then commit it to our brains and our hearts simultaneously. Three, two, one. Choosing to treat others the way you want to be treated. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to show love to somebody that you might not necessarily wanted to? Maybe a little bit. Um, how about this? Um, what what if you were I don't know the Gaga champion of the world? Well, obviously I'm telling your story, but hypothetically for all of us. So. You're you're pretty good at Gaga. This this might just be a, a weird fluke thing where you just happen to be super lucky all the time. But Gaga's your sport. It's kind of like Gracie. Gracie, you're amazing get at getting out time. first every time. It's amazing. So Gaga is your sport, and you're really good at it. Your friends go, man, I, I kind of don't want to even want to play because they're in and they're gonna win because they're that good. And Gaga's your thing. But uh, then there's a new kid that comes to school. The new kid has got this weird natural ability with this Gaga sport. And in fact, he kind of just like runs circles around you, literally and figuratively. You're playing, and he hits it. It bounces off of your face and goes out. You're out because you're the last one that touched it. I love that role, by the way. And then uh, you, you're like, well, that was my sport. Uh, well, maybe I can do better again. You get in, and you try to turtle a little bit, and they just bounce it up off the ceiling. Comes down. It's when you like hide like this, protecting yourself. But it hits your back, flies up in the air, and you go, oh, that's weird. And then it hits your head, and then it goes out, and you're out again because you're the last one that touched it. And then... You're like, well, I'm going to try one more time. I got this. New kid, you're going down. And you, you get into the ring. You play it safe. You kind of hang out in the corner away from everybody. Let, let the, the just regular folk get out. And then it comes down to just you and him, mano y mano, or her, whatever the new kid's gender is. I don't know. They hit the ball up in the air. But then you remember you're allowed to do it twice. Double touch is allowed. There's only two people left. They smack it real hard off of your face. Again, ball goes out. You're out. Three times. Well, you don't really feel like playing anymore. You go inside, you hang out, and then your teacher says, all right, Valentine's Day. Let's do something special for the class. Let's make everybody a valentine and you go well it's going to be real fun to make gracie a valentine and even even mr ian that's hard to say and then you get to that kid the new kid not you carson what is that kid's name? <laughs> he or she is named alex ha. and you're supposed to make a valentine's to show your love Alex. How's it feel? Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Darn it, Alex. <laughs> Don't be so mean. Alex is new. It's hard being a new kid. So you've been there before. At least you can picture in that situation where you're supposed to show love to the person you don't necessarily want to show love to, but you know you're supposed to. And part of the reason why you're supposed to is because of what this book says. Jesus preached a sermon. He was on the way to, like, Galilee, Capernaum. Is that the right word? Capernaum. Cap see it? Yeah, that one. Will, what was it? Capernaum. And he's preaching and teaching. Actually, he preaches this message that is longer than Shannon's messages. I know, right? He preaches... Not for 20 minutes. Not for 40 minutes. Most people think that this message that Jesus preached lasted like a week. 
Now, not necessarily that he got up and preached straight 24 hours and just kept going and pushing through, never taking a breath, but that he just preached and then they'd eat some food and hang out and then he would preach some more. And this message became one of the most popular messages ever. In fact, one of the authors in the Bible wrote down this message. It's referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. Now, you guys are all scholarly kids. You've been in four, five, six for a long time, actually. Looking around this room, some of you I remember from All Stars. Will. Hi. Hi. And we've been doing this study in the Bible where we started in the Old Testament, and we've been going through it chronologically, learning the history of the Bible and how it relates to itself and through it all. So my question to you is, where would this sermon be found? The New Testament. The New Testament. The story of Jesus being... Whoa, Matthew chapter 5, getting pretty darn specific. Let's see. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus is teaching a crowd. Looks like you're on a good streak here, William. So let's see. Jesus is preaching. Um, so that means it's Jesus preaching. It's probably Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John because those are the Gospels. And Jesus teaches something that I think we miss. Even Christians. Even adults. Like, this is a very, very radical and bold message that Jesus preaches. And so I want to look at it, and I want to see exactly what Jesus says about love. Valentine's Day just happened, and we may have missed it, even celebrating love on that special day. Is there somebody that wants to read? It's probably three slides. It's a little bit bigger than usual. Tyler, you got this? All right. But here's what I tell you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. Then you'll be sons of your Father who is in heaven. He causes sun to shine on evil people and good people. He sends rain on those who do right and those who don't. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Even the tax collectors do that. If you greet only your own people, what more are you doing than others? Even people who are ungodly do that. So be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Thank you, Tyler. So Jesus says, love your neighbor, which is found in Leviticus. It's one of the, like, Old Testament laws you're supposed to love your neighbor. And then he says, uh, hate your enemy. So people have taught that. They would say, they'd actually point to Leviticus, and they would say, you're supposed to love and get even with other people. That there was this concept. Say that again. Weird. You're supposed to love them. So let's see, before Carson yells out again. Um, the Bible talked about this loving your neighbor, but it also talked about if you are in a fight, and in that fight your neighbor punches your ox, and your ox gets a broken eye, then your neighbor owes you a new ox. A new ox's eye. It was weirdly specific. Like, if you read Leviticus, you're going to go, what? An ox like a, a big cow with horns. Oh, yeah. Or it would say things like, um, if, you, um, if someone is breaking into your house and they kill two of your chickens in the process, then they owe you two chickens to, I don't know, I don't know. It's weird. So there's all these rules, and people kind of confuse these rules with the right way to live. They'd be like, okay, there's this rule, so therefore let's get even and make everything right. But Jesus was like, so you've heard this, and people have taught this, but it's so much more than that. It's not just getting even, like it, it's showing love. And so he says to, you, here's what I tell you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Hold on. So I've heard a couple of things before. Like even, even at church, even with small groups, that sometimes people are like, well, if someone gets really, really angry and upset at you, then you should um, leave the situation. That way you, you don't make it, it worse. Um, or if somebody's like, 
being a bully to you, um, you, you should go to tell the teacher and uh, the teacher's going to make everything all right. Um, it's kind of what the world says, but Jesus' way is different. Jesus says to love your enemies. He says to pray for those who hurt you, to pray for them. It's pretty bold too. So let's think about this. Let's break it down a little bit. If we're to love our enemies, not just like be okay with them, not just ignore them, not just like let them do their own thing, but if we're to actually love them, which is an action to love another person, to step out of your comfort zone, it looks different. The Jesus way looks different. So let's go into a couple of situations. Let's say you are at school. You're in the lunch line. It's your favorite day. It is um, brownie, brownie day. Meatloaf day is your favorite? Pizza Friday. You guys have weird favorites. Weird favorites. For real, meatloaf? No. School meatloaf? Oh, I don't know if you ever Okay, Carson, you're just crazy. So let's say it's your favorite day. It's brownie day, because brownies make sense way more than meatloaf. And you're in line waiting to get your brownie, but then you realize that the brownies are running out, and you go, oh, no, I wish that I can get a brownie. And the guy that's in front of you, you know, that guy or girl, Alex. <laughs> Darn, Alex. Don't, don't end up hating people named Alex. That would be unfortunate. So Alex is in front of you, and Alex turns around and goes, but they're full of empty calories. And you're like, oh, my enemy. And then you're getting closer to the line, and you realize there's only like two or three left. And you're like, man, I hope I get a brownie. And Alex turns and goes, if I get a brownie, I'm just going to throw it away because brownies are gross. And you're like, come on, Alex. <laughs> So then you get up there, and Alex gets a brownie, the last brownie, and you don't get a brownie. So the way of the world might do something with the situation. The way of the world might just be like, stinking Alex. I can't believe her or him, and I'm so upset about this. Oh, or the way of the world might be like, can you believe Alex? Alex took the last brownie, and she's not even, he, or she's not even going to eat it, and they might gossip about it or talk about it, um, they, they might maybe, like, do the tap on the shoulder thing. Right. Tap, tap, come around this way, grab the brownie and run. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> um, I think sometimes when we think the way of the world, we're like, well, someone of the world would probably attack them and kill them and take their brownie. Oh. But that's not realistic. Like, the way of the world, most people would just, like, be irritated and frustrated. Now, the Jesus way, I think, is a little bit different. If we're to love our enemy, that means that we're putting our enemy's needs above our own. We're treating them the way that I would want to be treated. We're showing them grace. And man, it's not about getting even. It's not about things being fair. It's about showing love to that person. And so I don't know about you, but I, if I want to be treated a certain way, like I happen to like ice cold milk with my brownies. I also like cookies with my brownies because I'm chubby. I also like, uh, like people to not talk behind my back. And so if I'm going to love somebody the way that Jesus loves, and if I'm going to love my enemy, instead of getting even or trying to make things right or something like that, I would probably use my own money to buy some milk for my enemy. And I would be kind to them, and I wouldn't be condescending and be like, here's some milk for your brownie. I'd be like, here, I got you this milk. I always like milk with my brownies, so why don't you enjoy that? And then I wouldn't also pat myself on the back and be like, good job, Corey. You did it. Um, I wouldn't be like, hey, I did this thing for Alex. How cool is that? But I just let it be what it is. And I would show love to Alex if I was living out the Jesus way. Now, I gave you an example. But I want to see what you think. So next situation, let's say you're in math. Math just happens to be your subject. Your teacher says, math equation, math equation, math equation, and you go, seven, because I know the answer. 
And you're really good at math, but Alex is sitting beside you, and Alex doesn't know math. And Alex is kind of getting a little bit frustrated with the teacher when the teacher's trying to do all this math stuff. And then the teacher says, all right, you got some time to work on these problems. If you need some help, talk to your neighbors beside you. <laughs> so the way of the world, average person, not, not someone who's living the way of Jesus, what might they do in that situation? Grace. Put a folder up. Folder up. You're like, and <laughs> barrier. Alex can't see me. Okay, I like it. What else? Hide your paper or hide their paper? Uh, I like it. Ish. Yes? Tell them the wrong answers and then you just write the right answers on your own paper. But just uh, like act like you're helping other people with the answers. Like you're helping them get it right, but you're actually uh, making Alex... All wrong. See, possibly, but like, I actually think most people aren't that mean. Like, I think the way of the world, most people would, wouldn't actually give wrong answers and do that. They just kind of ignore them. Be like, nah, I'm not helping you. I think that's the way of the world, kind of. That would be a super bully way, though, yeah. Okay. So just move, avoid it, put up a blocker, give them the wrong answers, or hide your work or their work. Um, so those are options, but that's not the Jesus way. The Jesus way of loving your enemies, loving somebody. Loving is an action. Loving is doing something. What would the Jesus way be in the situation? Grace. Oh, well, even though Alex is kind of snob, slash dirt, slash everything, not good. Slash really good at Gaga Ball. Helping them out, yeah. Not help them out. But you don't just do all the work for them, yeah. but help them help learn them it. Yes, Gabby. It's okay, help Steve slash Alex. I like it. So if, if you have another neighbor beside you, help that neighbor, not Alex. I know that's <laughs> Jesus way. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know about that one, Gracie. But it's like, that might be the way of the world, the Jesus way. It's not going to help him if you're mad at him. You're just going to be frustrated. No, I, I, would, I would disagree. I would say that that, that is the way of the world. Because Jesus' way, even if you're angry, you're still showing love. Like, Jesus proved it on the cross. People were killing him, and he forgave them, and he was graceful to them while he was literally being killed by them, which is worse than math. A little bit. <laughs> help the person that helps the person? Possibly, but I still don't think that's a Jesus way. Because, man, Jesus, like, went straight up to Zacchaeus, the enemy of the people, and showed love to him. He didn't go over to you know, John, and say, John, all right, Zacchaeus, go for it. Yeah. Like, Jesus' way is radical, I'm telling you. What else? Complimenting someone that's mean to you? Wow, that sounds a lot like the Bible. Yeah. So going above and beyond... That does sound a lot like Jesus. Jesus showed so much grace. So even with Zacchaeus, like, he talked to him, which shouldn't have happened, and then went and ate a meal with him and forgave him and showed love. Yeah, Carson. So Alex or Steve, do they, uh, do they look like the Minecraft stars? I have no idea what they look <laughs> Alex like. Alex and Steve from Minecraft. Yes, Haley. So, like, if you try to help Alex and Alex and Steve, Yes. Now, I love that answer, but man, easier said than done. Like, if you actually pictured yourself in this situation, and Alex, the one that's been rude to you all day, getting you out in Gaga Ball, and eating that brownie, and then they're needing help, and you 
Don't ignore them. You help them. But then you stay later after school. That's going to take a lot of commitment from you. Your time. That's showing love. That's bold. Last situation. Baseball. I don't understand a baseball. You don't have to. So let's say you are the first base player. Good morning. And you, you do pretty good. You're, you hold your own. You're, you're pretty good at this. But uh, after school, you go to practice, and, you know, there's a new kid that's pretty athletic. Alex. And Alex actually played first base at the previous school. And so while the coach is trying things out, um, they give your spot to Alex. And so instead of playing first base, the coach puts you in the outfield. And to make matters worse, that night when you have your game, ball comes flying. You're not used to playing outfield. You're used to playing first base. And you kind of misjudge the, the depth. You got some depth perception issues. And, and you don't catch the ball, which means that the other team scores. And you get an error. And then Alex is like, hey, why don't you try doing better? And you're like, thanks, Alex. This Alex kid is really getting on my nerves. And then it happens again, like twice in one game. There's two errors, and you cause them both. And your team's tied up going into the, the last inning, and uh, Alex then gets an error, which costs the game. What's an error? So, like, I'm throwing you the ball, and you miss it, and then the person scores. Because you messed up. Uh, outfield's the outfield. Oh boy, I thought I didn't know the sports ball. So let's say what what happens then? End of the game, it's over. You're walking back to the uh, dugout. Thank you. And uh, Alex is there. The way of the world. What might the way of the world do? Gracie. Go home and instead of shooting baseball plays. I would do that. Study something different. Study yes. <laughs> so, punching's pretty extreme. Actually, I don't think the way of the world would do that. Like, super bully, maybe, but just average person. <laughs> mm. So, you. Kind of like just create this diabolical plan while you're walking to the dugout and you're like, well, if I don't ever help him in math again, he will fail and won't be able to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and you would definitely do this. Yes, Gabby. Oh, that sounds like the Jesus way. We're not there yet. Saying good job to an enemy. Yeah, that sounds like the Jesus way. Actually, I think the way the world might look like this game. Like, just not giving him a high five, sarcastically saying something to him, uh, or just ignoring him. The way of the world's not normally, let's fight and let's diabolically make him fail. It's just ignoring him. Or maybe he's being like, why don't you do better? putting his words back at him. Sounds like that might be the way of the world. The Jesus way, though. Gabby, you were saying that you show kindness to him, which would be hard. He lost the game. Your game would be hard. Carson, is it a real one? Uh, yeah. Okay. We moved on from that one, though. You got to keep it in. Like, keep it in. Uh, being good to him, like uh, teaching him how to be nice. Okay. How would you do that, though? Tell him to be nice. You are not nice. Yeah, I don't know if that would work. I don't know. It might yeah. work. You can tell him he did a good job at first base and ask him if he wants to help you out too. That would take a lot of humility. Yeah. To ask for help from Alex. But if Alex can't play out well, he can't play Well, he could probably play, play them all. He's pretty good. He's messed up that one time. Man, the, uh, the Jesus way would be hard to be like, good game. Not sarcastic, showing love, 
Or even to say, I'm glad you're on the team. Or we're going to work together. We're going to have to work a little bit harder on that. Or, hey, we all make mistakes. I even made some tonight. Those things would be harder to say. And, and I think this, this love thing, um, some of us are missing it. Like to show love in a lot of these situations means doing something. Not just not doing something, not just not fighting the person or not just like giving them bad answers, but actually being like, you know, this is uncomfortable for me. This is going to be hard for me, but I'm still going to step up and do something here. Jesus modeled this so many times that he went above and beyond to show love to people that spit in his face, literally. And so times when you are being picked on, instead of looking at them as, woe is me, this is the worst thing ever, oh my gosh, he's a jerk. Why don't we try to consider it an opportunity to show love to somebody? To maybe, maybe even that can help you focus it in on your brain. Somebody's mean to me. Cue, you know? Ooh, I can be nice to that person. And like actually do something. Buying them milk. Giving them some help after school. Or giving them a high five. I don't know. I think that that could change things. Jesus actually said, you, you know the way that the people are going to know that you're a follower of mine? The way that you're going to know that you're a disciple? It's not by how much Bible knowledge you know. It's not by how many times you go to church. It's not by how many friends you have. It's by your love. That that's how the world's going to know that you are a disciple, by the way you love one another. So let's do this. Let's pray over this lesson. Let's have an opportunity to worship God. Um, he's always worthy of our time. And then we'll jump into small groups, answer some questions. I'll have to jump into that quick, though. So will you join me in prayer? Father, while we were still sinners at our very worst, you sent your son, Jesus, to love us, to give his life for us. And so help us to resemble Jesus this week. Help us to remember the Jesus way. And God, when bad times come, and we know they will, uh, help us to see that as an opportunity to show love. Uh, if, even for us adults in the room, when, when we're at work and it's just being a pain or the coworkers doing whatever, help us to see that as an opportunity. Uh, God, it's worth our time to do it. It models you. And man, it just usually ends up so much better anyway. So God, help us to be your disciples, to be known by our love. Uh, God, it's your son's name that we pray. Amen.